guys and welcome back to another Freaky Friday video on my channel. I do just want to apologize like I do at a lot of the beginning of these videos. If you can hear any background noise throughout this video, I do live with a bunch of people, a baby and a bunch of dogs, so sometimes I just can't help the background noise. But um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say besides that, so let's get right into today's video. Travis Walton was born on February 10th, 1953. He was an American and overall had a very normal life up until the year of 1975 when he claimed to have been abducted by aliens. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. But before we get too deeply into this video, I do just want to mention that this case is extremely controversial. There is a lot of people who do not believe that this case is sincere. And then there are a lot of people who strongly believe it, so this case is just very controversial. Although I do feel like a lot of alien abduction cases are very controversial. This one is just like excessively controversial. I am not taking one side or the other side. I just want to talk about this case with you guys today to share the information that I found online because I did think that it was pretty interesting. So on November 5th, 1975, 22-year-old Travis Welton was working his job as a logger in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest. I should mention, which I didn't in the last clip, that this forest is located in Arizona. So they were working and once Travis and his co-workers had finished working, they all got into the truck and headed, I guess, towards their homes. While they were driving home, that is when they saw what they described as a very strange disc looking object floating around in the sky. At this time, Travis being 22, young, youthful and adventurous and curious, he hopped into the car to run over and get a better view at what exactly this disc object was. His co-workers didn't think that this was a good idea and they proceeded to try and call Travis back into the car, but Travis didn't listen to them and he ran towards this object and once he became within cloak's proximity to this object, that is when a bolt kind of shot out of it, shooting directly at Travis, shooting him 20 feet into the air and knocking him completely unconscious. At this time, his coworkers were very frightened and concerned and didn't know what to do, so they were still in the car and they just kind of fled the scene. When Travis came back to and regained his consciousness, when he woke up, he immediately thought that he was on a hospital gurney in a hospital, like that his coworkers had gotten him, put him in the truck and taken him to the emergency room. But once he opened his eyes, he said that his vision was very blurred and he couldn't really get his bearings. But when he did, that is when he saw something absolutely horrifying. Travis claimed that at this time, after he opened his eyes, he saw three extraterrestrials standing over him. They were all wearing what appeared to be orange surgical gowns and they had very large luminous brown eyes and just appeared to be staring at him very intently. So now we are going to backtrack a little bit to when Travis's co-workers fled the scene. Obviously, after witnessing what they had witnessed, they were all extremely shaken up and they drove straight to the police department located in Snowflake, Arizona. The officers who they initially talked to did confirm that all of the men, I believe there was three of them, appeared to be very, very shaken up and stressed out by what they had just witnessed. So after they came into the police station claiming that aliens had abducted Travis or aliens had done something to Travis, they all got into a police car and they went down to search the area where Travis initially was shocked by that jolt of energy or whatever it was. They went down, they searched the area, but they couldn't find any sign of Travis and they figured that maybe it would be their best bet to come back the next day when it was light out and kind of search the area again because it was very like overgrown and there was a lot of like trees and things like that in that area so they thought that maybe that was kind of deterring them from being able to find Travis because it was nighttime. So the next day they returned to the scene and they searched again, but this time they left empty handed as well with no sign of Travis. News of what had happened on the night of November 5th spread very, very quickly. It got out to the public and it was very quickly became national news with people traveling from all over the state to come to this area in hopes of getting a sight of some extraterrestrial or having something to do with this case because it was big, big news at that time. Now, as some of you may know, in Arizona, the days are very hot because it is the desert, but at night, the temperatures drop significantly. 
and it was November, meaning that it was winter, so the temperatures would drop even more. And with Travis being out there and being injured by the beam that had shot in him, people quickly started to be concerned that Travis may have actually passed away by this time. As you have probably imagined, when these men came into the police station claiming that one of their workers or their co-workers had been abducted by aliens or attacked by aliens or whatever they were saying to police that definitely involved extraterrestrials, the police were a little skeptical and a little taken back as I think anybody would be because of course aliens aren't something that we hear about on a daily basis and so if you hear somebody coming at you so concerned that somebody had just been attacked by an alien or abducted to buy an alien, especially being law enforcement, I feel like you're going to be a little bit skeptical about that, so I have no problem with the police being skeptical about that. So anyways, they started to think that there was a possibility that maybe Travis and one of his other co-workers had some bad blood, something happened, and it resulted in the murder of Travis. They thought that there was at this point a high possibility that foul play was involved. So they brought in all of the co-workers and made them take a polygraph test with all of them passing except for a man by the name of Alan Dial. His um, polygraph test came back inconclusive. But besides that, or even after that, police quickly talked to the coworkers, they questioned them, they investigated them, and they were pretty much quickly able to determine that foul play was out of the question and they had nothing to do with this, and none of these men fell under suspicion of having anything to do with Travis's disappearance. And then strangely, just five days after Travis had disappeared, he showed back up. He said that he had woken up wet and cold, and this story varies from site to site. Some saying that he woke up in Heber, Arizona, and others say that he woke up in the exact same spot where he had seen this flying disc where he had gotten shot by the beam. But regardless of where he woke up, he walked somewhere to a phone and he was able to call, I believe, his older brother. He called him and that night, Although weak, tired, he said when he woke up he was absolutely starving and really, really thirsty, Travis was taken in for medical examinations because obviously he'd been missing for five days, he was in really bad condition, he looked really tired and weak and just horrible, like he had been sick. So immediately after he returned, he called his brother and they took him in for medical examination immediately. Travis claims that when he woke up, he thought that he was in the exact area where he had been before he had been abducted. He also said that when he had woken up, he had only thought that it had been a couple hours and he was absolutely shocked to have found out that he had been missing for five days. Along with that, when he woke up, Travis found that his clothes were on backwards, which to him was an obvious sign that they had been removed at some point. When Travis returned to work, he went and he talked to his boss, and I believe that his boss was like good at art or something like that. So he kind of described to his boss what exactly it was that he had seen, and his boss drew up a picture, and I personally haven't seen this picture. I was looking for it, I couldn't find it, but once I'm done filming, I'm going to continue to look for it. So if I can find it, I will insert it here. But allegedly, this picture looked pretty much identical to what your average gray aliens would look like. The only difference was, was that this specific alien that Travis was describing to his boss was wearing an orange medical gown. After talking to investigators, I'm just going to share what he told them a little bit, which is kind of briefly what I already touched base on, but Travis said that he couldn't really recall anything about the abduction until he woke up on that examination table cold and his body was extremely sore because he had been shot 20 feet in the air, like he was flying through the sky. He said that his body was really, really sore and again, he was really disoriented when he woke up and he thought that his coworkers had gotten him to an emergency room, but that was until, again, he saw the three extraterrestrials that had been standing in the room with him and the area in which the bed was in was obviously not a hospital room. He said that the bed that he was on was very, very similar to that of the examination tables that you see when you go into the hospital, but the room didn't really resemble that of a hospital room 
And once he got his bearings, he kind of took this in very, very quickly. And immediately, obviously, after he saw the three beings that were in the room with him, he knew that something was wrong. So being absolutely horrified of what was going on, he kind of mustered up a little bit of energy, which I can believe. Some people really question this, but I feel like when you're really scared or something really bad is happening, you have that little spark of adrenaline that keeps you going. So he said that at this time, he kind of mustered up enough energy to push one of the beings that was in the room with him and he said at this time this being kind of went flying and he fell over and then the three beings left the room and left Travis in the room by himself for a little while after this he doesn't really go too much in depth about the abduction or what had happened at that exact time but he said while he was on this ship he encountered several different types of aliens that he described, like he described greys, he described other beings that were not greys, so he encountered many different types of aliens while on this ship. And he said while he was on this ship, he underwent a lot of medical procedures that were quite painful. Travis gave a detailed description of what the aliens that he mainly dealed with looked like. He said that they were smaller than five feet tall with bald heads that he said resembled that of fetuses and were dome shaped. He emphasized that these creatures had huge eyes that almost were all brown, having very little white in them, and he said that the eyes were so large that they made everything else on the alien's face look excessively small. So obviously for the five days that Travis was missing, he was allegedly aboard these aliens' ship. And as you can imagine, just like a lot of cases like this, a lot of the stories and the information that Travis himself have shared did get lost in translation. A lot of the stories are conflicting and they don't line up. Um, so I'm not going to go too deeply into those here just because I don't want to get anything wrong and get attacked for reading miscommunication or for sharing a story from one website and that being wrong. And then, you know, I just am not going to go too deeply into that. But like I already mentioned, Travis claimed that while aboard this ship or this ship, he underwent a lot of very painful medical procedures that were done to him by these aliens. Travis also talked about very briefly how when he returned from this journey that he had been on from his abduction, how he was under a lot of speculation by police. They interrogated him, they brought him in and really questioned him and put a lot of pressure on him because the police were trying to find an ulterior motive or something that was going on that did not involve aliens. And really, can you blame them? I mean, like I mentioned already, this is probably so crazy to be an officer and to have a bunch of grown men come in and they're not on drugs, there's nothing wrong with them, they were working and they're telling you that their friend was just abducted by aliens. Like, I can only imagine the police officers probably felt like they were on some weird TV show or something. But obviously, Travis went under a lot of speculation. He was really, really investigated. He went through tons of questioning, tons of investigation. Police wanted to know if maybe he was hiding out somewhere for those five days and if anybody had seen him. And obviously, they wanted to know this because if Travis had been hiding out or there was some kind of ulterior motive to him vanishing, for those five days so that he could be properly prosecuted and some people may find that mean but they did put a lot of time and resources into searching for Travis so I do think that that's reasonable but they were unable to find anything pointing in that direction um, they weren't really able to find a lot of things to point in the direction that he actually been abducted by aliens but they weren't able to find anything to suggest that he hadn't been abducted by aliens either while Travis was being investigated, a lot of scientists took a large interest in Travis's case, obviously, because it deals with aliens. And they actually began to test the soils and whatnot in the area where Travis had been abducted. And that is when they found that there had been abnormal tree growth in that area over the span of however many years in the exact spot where Travis had seen the object and where he had been abducted. The National Inquiry wanted Travis to take two polygraph tests and he didn't really want to so they offered him $100,000 if he would take two polygraph tests and if he could pass them both. But the results for those two tests came back inconclusive and the examiner claimed that he believed that Travis was the biggest liar that he had ever met in his entire life. After the local UFO investigators got news of this, they also wanted Travis to take, um, I guess, completely different polygraph tests. That would be run by them. They wanted him to take three of them, and the tests, or the results, sorry, for those three tests also came back inconclusive. 
1978, Travis came out with a book about his experience called The Walton Experience. And he pretty much after this, when everything died down, the news died down, and he stopped getting so much negative attention or just attention altogether, he continued to live in Snowflake, he got married, he had several children, he worked, I believe, pretty high up in a lumber mill, and he just went on to live a very, very normal life, occasionally, you know, appearing on TV shows to talk about his experience or going to UFO conventions, but overall, he just went on to live a very normal life despite what had happened. Happened to him. And in 1993, Travis's book was adapted into a film called Fire in the Sky. Now, I haven't read the book, I also haven't seen the movie, but I really hope to in the future. Um, I got most of this information just from articles online. Um, but I probably should go and watch those movies and I really do want to read the book. I was actually thinking of ordering it online because I'm very, very interested in this case. But guys, that brings us to the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd like to see in my future videos and don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.